Okay. Good noon, everyone, and uh, thank you again, Chef, Dr. Kate, and Dr. Jello for inviting me to give this lecture. Um, this is the third week that we are under, you know, uh, enhanced community quarantine, and I miss seeing real people. Ang dami ko na kasi nakikita, parang hindi na yata totoong tao. Anyway... <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so our topic for, for this session is on COVID-19 and uh, HIV and at the same time, sex and intimacy in the context of COVID-19 and lockdown. So uh, our learning our participants have a better understanding of the following. Uh, basic facts on COVID-19, but it's uh, uh, I'm sure Kate already discussed, you know, heavily on this in, in the previous session. And I'll talk more on what PLHIV need to know about COVID-19. And at the same time, the implications of this crisis to the HIV program. Lastly, uh, I think the, the more juicy uh, part would be sex and intimacy in the context of COVID-19. So, uh, basic facts just to review. Of course, uh, we know that COVID-19 is an, is an infectious disease caused by the novel coronavirus virus SARS-CoV-2. And uh, the virus is spreads through the air in droplets uh, produced when infected people cough or sneeze. And at the same time, it can also contaminate, you know, uh, surfaces um, such as doorknobs, floors, walls, and tabletops. So um, this is through the foam mites. And common signs uh, of infection are the following, of course, fever, cough, shortness of breath, and, um, you know, breathing difficulties. And for more severe infection, it can, um, you know, a, 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 a patient can suffer pneumonia, acute respiratory syndrome, acute renal impairment, sepsis. And, of course, we know this. Uh, we, we already have, you know, this number of deaths um, secondary to um, COVID-19. So, uh, HIV and COVID-19. So, at, at this point, uh, there is no evidence no, to suggest that people living with HIV are at a higher risk of contracting SARS-CoV-2. And um, also, no evidence at present, you know, to suggest that people living with HIV are at higher risk of serious illness if they do contract COVID-19. As in the general population, uh, we always say that people, with, um, older people living with HIV or those who have additional conditions such as diabetes, hypertension, heart or lung problems, uh, may have a higher risk of becoming infected with the virus or uh, could have more severe um, or serious uh, symptoms <clears throat> as compared to um, uh, the other uh, uh, population. But of course, uh, knowing that age, I particularly those with advanced um, HIV disease, of course, you, you all know this, that they could have higher risk of, you know, uh, being infected and at the same time uh, having more serious symptoms. Also, people with low CD4 count and high viral load and people who are not taking antiretroviral or those who have stopped uh, taking antiretroviral, this may weaken their immune system and leaves them vulnerable to um, COVID, not only for COVID-19 actually, uh, for that matter, you know, for any other infections as well. 
However, there are very few reported cases of COVID infection among PLHIV. Um, I think we have anecdotal report, but it's not been um, verified. In the country, we have, um, based dun sa, sa group chat that we have, I think two LHIV have contracted the virus, but we, um, you know, the, the, the government or the DOH has not verified this, this report yet because of the issue of disclosure and, um, and also yung ating surveillance is not that good, particularly for those um, um, uh, PLHIV. Now, um, now, I mentioned that PLHIV is are at higher risk because of these slides. And looking at the uh, HIV cascade that we have, of the 90,400 estimated PLHIV in 2019, only 62,942 are on treatment, okay, are diagnosed, sorry. And only about 45,000 are enrolled, are currently enrolled in treat, on treatment, started on treatment. Unfortunately, um, mas nabawasan pa yan because there are uh, people uh, who stopped taking their retroviral, antiretroviral drugs. So, ang naka-ART lang talaga ay 38,900. Okay? And if you combine, you know, these people... Um, uh, who are not treatment, we have like 51,497 PLHIV not on ART and could infect other individuals. And could we could say that they are at higher risk for COVID-19. That's about 57% actually. More than half of the estimated people living with HIV are not on treatment in the country right now. So ito yung winawari natin. Although we're saying that, you know, people, um, you know, people living with HIV would have the same risk as in the general population if they are virally suppressed. But since they are not on treatment, around 57%, ito yung medyo nakakatakot. So, and that's why, you know, in terms of the HIV program, we really need to, to diagnose these people and start them on treatment at once and keep them on treatment. Okay, so um, some people HIV are asking, you know, how should they manage their antiretroviral therapy? Of course, we always say that they should continue taking their ARBs as prescribed. And even before COVID-19, the, the program is already advocating for multi-month dispensing, you know, three-month dispensing natin. But unfortunately, it doesn't happen in all treatment facilities. Um, make sure, uh, for, you know, in this uh, crisis, make sure that, you know, PLHIV, all PLHIV should have at least one month supply of ART because of the, you know, uh, challenges in, in doing their refill which I will discuss later. And of course, they should know your, the contact number of the healthcare providers so that they can um, access refill and uh, consultation as well. Now, um, UNDP and UNAIDS um, did this survey actually to identify cons concerns from the ground. Um, we ran the survey, actually ongoing ito, but we started running the survey um, prior to March 27, um, a week after the lockdown, just to get the sense, ano ba yung nangyayari dun sa, sa, sa community. And these are the, the findings. So, mga concern, as of March 27, of course, 70% of the respondents mentioned about uh, issues in transportation and delivery. 57% of them um, said, you know, yung location ng hub is uh, challenging because we know for a fact that a lot of PLHIB 
uh, are accessing treatment outside their uh, residence, yung uh, outside their city or locality. 66% of them um, raise the issues on check checkpoints and crossing borders. And also 19% yung issues sa verification ng, ng booklets, okay? And still, 50% of them uh, talked about uh, the stocks of ARV at the facility level. And of course, um, is concerned on psychosocial support, employment, finance, and financial assistance, and uh, some in terms of you know shelter and housing. In terms of the transportation and delivery, these are the specific um, yes, the term of like one no transportation the municipality across cities in Metro Manila, provinces, and going in and out of Metro Manila, especially for those who need to go to an HIV facility for consultation. And also, some people living with HIV reside in areas near an HIV facility. Some have to go to a farther facility because of an availability of their treatment in the nearest facility, especially for um, second-line drugs, and even for real PV rin, ito yung naging issue kasi I understand it's only available in RITM at the same time and in some uh, facilities. Pero hindi siya available doon sa karamihan ng ating mga prima primary care clinics. Checkpoints and crossing borders. Some PLHIVs are not comfortable disclosing their HIV status at checkpoints. Uh, to be allowed to enter the area where the treatment hub is because there um, there was a post on Facebook, I think if you um, if you saw it, um, yung ating mga volunteer are being asked, you know, detailed questions uh, in turn, dun sa mga checkpoints. And it's it, to the point of, you know, madidisclose yung mga client natin. So, um, hindi lang basta... Uh, sila na satisfy na you are a health worker providing you know medical care but they're asking questions detailed questions some PLHIVs are worried that people securing the checkpoints will not understand their health condition some are worried that they might be discriminated against when they disclose their HIV status at checkpoints then naman sa verification um ito yung some PLHIVs do not have ARB booklet or even the confirmatory result which are being asked from them by their treatment hub. So this, make is, this makes it difficult for them to access ARV refill. So, and that's why we coordinated actually with EB if they can um, use uh, yung UIC lang, you know, wala na yung um, booklet. Um, so okay naman din, na address naman din yung issue na ito. Now, in terms of the stocks, of course, uh, there are some drugs not available like isoniazid, cotrimoxazole, azitro, particularly in Region 1. No stock of efavirenz at Las Piñas. And some PLHIVs are reporting partially divided with one or two bottles lang instead of the usual three. And some PLHIVs are asking if stocks of H ARV drugs will be affected in case the period of enhanced community quarantine will be extended. And based on the report, um, the lockdown will probably be extended for another two weeks. So ito yung concern. So what happens kung makontinue mag yung, uh, yung lockdown in terms of the stocks at the facility level? Other concerns are the following. Um, of course, um, some LHIV would like to know whether they are at high risk with COVID-19. And that's why if you already you know, saw the, the, the video that UNAIDS has posted, this is to address yung concern ng mga LHIV natin and talks about you know, the risk um, of uh, getting you know, COVID and at the same time, if they do contract, ano yung mangyayari? So I hope, you know, this, uh, the video has helped, you know, alleviating anxiety of 
um, those who are not aware of uh, how COVID-19 will um, affect the, the community. Um, there are reports from PLHIVs that stock of certain AVR drugs in some treatment hub is running low. And some PLHIV are asking if it is possible to have their refill for two months instead of one when going to the treatment hubs. Um, particularly in some areas where yung ating mga health worker ang nagdadala nung nagdeliver, particularly in Cebu and Iloilo, um, ang ginawa nila is uh, sila mis, yung mga health worker mis, may mga case managers natin ang nagdeliver ng, ng drugs. But of course, he, uh, this cannot be sustained because mapapago din yung healthcare workers natin. So, we're exploring other mechanism on how to bring ARVs dun sa ating mga clients. Um, hindi, not so much in NCR because may mga courier service tayo na functioning pa rin. But I think in some uh, uh, provinces, mahirap yung uh, uh, courier service. I mean, ang nagpa-function na lang yata LBC, but that will take time. Some PLHIVs who live alone and in places with no kitchens have no access to to healthy food. So again, issue ng, uh, um, you know, being living with with um, alone, hindi maayos yung uh, condition. And PLHIVs who are of OFWs are unsure where they can get treatment or when they can come home to the Philippines. And also, one PLHIV reported, you know, that TMC IREAC is not allowing them to have their ARB refill delivered through courier services. Um, there's also a need for and care plans for PLHIV in times of crisis or medical emergency. I think this is a, this is a, a, a lesson for us, you know, that um, we should always have a contingency plan if an emergency or crisis happens in the, in the future. Some PLHIVs are under quarantine with people whom they are not comfortable disclosing their HIV status with. So, na naipit sila, na hindi nila kakilala yung mga kasama nila dun sa bahay and they cannot, you know, talk about their, their status because they do not, uh, you know, uh, know the people they are living with at the same during the lockdown. Some PLHIVs are reporting lack of access to condoms during the period of enhanced community quarantine. So, and since um, uh, they cannot go out, for example, I did, and they do not have stocks of condom, medyo nahirapan sila, you know, and we will talk more about that in the in in the next uh, in the next part of the session. So, the survey uh, where recommendations were were relayed to the program, and somehow nagkaroon ng recalibration doon sa guidelines na pinalabas ng DOH. So these are the recommendations that we provided to the government. One is to ensure that local government units are able to extend their transportation services to people living with HIV, going to an HIV uh, facility for AR ARV refill. So we recommended na baka pwedeng gamitin na yung mga transportation or vehicles ng, ng LGU to deliver uh, ARVs. Um, provide additional transport delivery assistance to patients those whose nearest HIV facilities are outside their province or those that are too far from their residence, such as facilities that are around 10 kilometers or two hours away um, uh, from their res residence. And we also suggested to coordinate with PNP and AFP to ensure that people living with HIV are allowed entry at checkpoints when going to the HIV facility for refill and DOH to provide guidelines to PNP and AFP to guarantee the privacy expected at checkpoints. Also, um, we suggested to, um, you know, yung ARV medicines will be available across all HIV facilities despite the enhanced community quarantine. <clears throat> 
at kung ma-extend man, dapat ma-insure pa rin natin na available lahat ng ARB meds. Extend uh, accessible psychosocial support services to people living with HIV during the COVID-19 pandemic. Especially kung ma-extend pa yung lockdown and we know a lot of people are getting anxious and and even for non pele HIV, I mean, uh, you know, we really need to address the, the mental health issues and, and of course, the, yung psychosocial support through hot, hotlines can be implemented at this time. Coordinate with DSWD regarding assistance needed by people living with HIV in time of COVID, such as food, medicines, other essential supplies, and financial assistance. So, um, we also coordinated with JSWD and Bastin Memo JSWD. I hope all the treatment facilities have already, you know, get uh, got their copies of the JSWD uh, memo in terms of how to access financial support from JSWD. Disseminate information on HIV and COVID nineteen. So. Uh, we also developed um, info materials na na post din ito dun sa um, Facebook account ng UNDP ng ng UNA in, in uh, Facebook just to address yung mga concern nila in terms of um, uh, you know COVID nineteen and how to protect one's mental health during community quarantine. <clears throat> have an explicit and detailed advisory or guidance note from PhilHealth. Because as I'm sure most of you have read the guidelines, I'm sure they discussed the bench and the last time. Um, one of the, the, uh, the provisions of the memo is that facilities can use PhilHealth reimbursement to cover for the cost of courier service. Unfortunately, um, this is not happening in all um, facilities because medyo magkakaiba yung interpretation. So we already discussed this to PhilHealth and they promise actually to issue um, parang additional um, guideline on how to utilize PhilHealth reimbursement to cover for the cost of courier services. Now, um, we all provide this general recommendation such as to develop and implement a more concrete treatment and care plan for PLHIV during emergency and crisis, given the possibility of extended period of enhanced uh, community quarantine, and ensure continued access to condoms for PLHIVs and key populations, and even, you know, PrEP, for example. Um, assess the feasibility of providing more than one one month worth of ARV meds to HIV upon their refill to avoid frequent visit to HIV facilities or delivery, given the possibility of again of uh, extended um, ECQ. Um, ayon din naman natin na uh, pagod yung ating mga health workers sa pag-deliver, you know. Um, so we hope that the the program can consider more than one month worth of ARV medicine every time na mag Um The next slide is just to show you yung advisory na DOH in terms of um, to ensure access of ARV. So the use of courier service and of course it mentioned about the use of uh, OHAT uh, 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 reimbursement um, identifying access points or yung mga meet-up, okay? And also the use of the LGU vehicles for ARV delivery and the use of the electronic or SMS appointment information as a proof of entry. Um, kahit para mas mabilis, you know, uh, para lang sakaling tatanungin sila sa checkpoints, they can uh, show yung text ng provi healthcare provider that they are that they have an appointment to this facility. Now, um, 
UNAIDS also develop this info materials and uh, about precautions that people living with HIV and key population should follow to prevent COVID-19 infection. Basically the same as what the, the, the government is um, saying, you know, so clean hands frequently, cover your mouth, avoid close contact with anyone who has fever or cough. Of course, social distancing, you have to stay at home when you are ill and um, you wear masks if, you know, you, you, you go out like, you know, for, for, for grocery or to buy meds. So you have to wear masks all the time. Now, for uh, specific poor people living with HIV, they should be prepared and ensure adequate supply of ARVs. They should know how to contact uh, their healthcare providers um, and how to access treatment and other support within your community. And the key population should ensure access essential means to prevent HIV infection, um, including condom and access to PrEP. More importantly, we need to so you have to support yourself and the people around you. And as I mentioned, COVID-19 may cause fear and anxiety. And so everyone should take care of themselves. And I mentioned this, you know, that more than being responsible with our own health, we should also be responsible for one another. And um, let us be reminded that, you know, amidst the social distancing, we can show uh, solidarity and togetherness particularly in the in our community and we should connect with others and share your concerns and how you are feeling with a friend or family member para lang din you know to get uh, psychosocial support now i'll talk about uh, a bit on stigma uh, this is happening now uh, particularly for our healthcare providers so and even for 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 hiv we know that stigma and discrimination could be a big barrier to an effective response to COVID. And this is a time where racism, stigma can be directed against groups considered to be affected, particularly those who are immunocompromised, my healthcare workers, nothing. So I think your workplace, healthcare or access to education for your children may be affected by the COVID outbreak if social distancing measures are put in place you know, in the community. So find out your rights and make sure that you and your community are prepared. So there are also questions about the use of um, antiretroviral drugs for, for COVID-19. So again, um, you know, this is an active area of research and several randomized clinics are ongoing to determine whether ARVs but until such time na mayroong strong evidence, we cannot say that antiretrovirals are effective for treatment of COVID-19. Now, let's go to the uh, most exciting na part. So, sex and intimacy, you know, in, 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 in time of COVID-19 and lockdown. So, uh, I just lifted this from... Uh, New York City government, you know, uh, website. Wala pa kasi tayong local, but uh, they provided some tips on how to enjoy sex and avoid spreading COVID-19 at the same time. Because as you all know, um, in the Maslow's hierarchy of needs, uh, kasama pa rin yung sex as a physiologic need. So, even in times of crisis, you know, maraming, this is a need that we also need to be satisfied, okay? So, but of course, you, everyone should know how COVID-19 spreads for us to, to know kung paano din natin mapoprotektahan yung ating mga part, ating sarili, and of course, our partners. So, Basic facts, you can get COVID from a person who has it and the virus can spread to people who are within about fit for personal COVID or sneezes, okay? 
um, that the droplet actually can, can travel uh, more than about six feet or more, um, you know, if the person coughs or, coughs or sneezes. The virus can spread through direct contact with saliva or mucus. So during kissing, you can actually spread the virus. We still have a lot of learn about COVID-19 and sex. Um, it has been found in feces of people who are infected with the virus, but it has not yet been found in semen or vaginal fluid. So we know that other coronaviruses do not efficiently transmit through sex. So we do not know, you know, if the, the mode of transmission um, may change or, or walang, wala pang evidence at this time. Um, so let's practice having sex with people close to you. Uh, of course, the safest is you doing it, you know, to yourself. Masturbation will not spread COVID-19, especially if you wash your hands. And if you find of using sex toys, wash it with soap and water for at least 20 seconds before and after sex and of course the next safest partner is someone you live with um, having contact close contact including sex with only small circle of people helps prevent spreading the virus and have sex only with consenting partners of course so dapat mutual okay and you should avoid close contact including sex with anyone outside your household so bawal po mga pitbahay muna so if you do have sex with others have a judgment because some may you know uh, may not be satisfied with with one partner at this point so, bawasan natin, you know, limit to few partners as possible. If you usually meet your sex partners online or make a living by having sex, consider taking a break from in-person dates. So, pwede naman uh, uh, video dates, sexting, or chat rooms may be option, or Zoom, baka pwede rin. You can have sex through Zoom and other online platforms. Uh, kissing can, can easily pass COVID. So avoid kissing anyone who is not part of your circle of close contacts. Ribbing, mouth to anus might spread COVID because you, as mentioned, um, the virus has been seen in the feces. Okay, and it may enter through your mouth if you do ribbing. Condoms and dental da dental dams can reduce contact saliva, especially during oral or anal sex. And washing up before and after sex is more important than ever. Okay, so just like washing washing your hands, it should be at least twenty seconds with soap and water. And again, uh, you have to wash your sex toys with soap and warm water as well. Of course, if your partner is feeling not feeling well, you might want to skip sex at this time. So, <clears throat> and if you start to feel unwell as well, you may be about to develop symptoms of COVID-19, which includes fever, cough, sore throat, or short shortness of breath. Um, if you or your partner has medical condition that can lead to more severe COVID-19, you may also want to skip sex. And medical conditions include lung disease, heart disease, diabetes or cancer, or weakened immune system. For example, having unsuppressed HIV and low CD4, you might want you know, to skip sex for now. And then lastly, um, of course, to prevent HIV and other sexually transmitted infection and unplanned pregnancy, uh, use condom uh, or prep or pre exposure prophylaxis, <clears throat> and of course, uh, condom for, for other STIs as well and pregnancy. 
So make sure you have an effective form of birth control for the coming weeks. And I think this is my last slide. So let's all stay safe and COVID free. Let's all, um, you know, contribute in flattening the curve. And I hope, you know, we can do that in the next few days or next few weeks. And, you know, we, lahat tayo is uh, responsible in making sure that transmission will be halted by staying at home and, uh, you know, um, doing the precautionary measures in terms of uh, reducing exposure to SARS-CoV-2. That's all. Thank you. So, ano yung mga possible ways para hindi natin ma-expose unnecessarily ang mga clients natin? Number one is, kung hindi life-threatening ang dahilan ng pagpunta sa clinic, huwag na pumunta. Okay? Kasi ang refill, pwede nyo ipadala sa kanila yan. So, kailangan natin mag-isip ng way to deliver or... Deliver. Deliver na tayo. Or meron kayo siguro mm -hmm. mga pop-up places in your community. Pwede bang sa CBO office na lang sila kumuha mm -hmm. ng refill? Parang branch nyo yun. Huwag yun nang ilapit sa kung saan may definite COVID kasi regardless of status, I would not recommend it. Ngayon, lahat ng mga pasyente, may, hindi naman nag na quarantine ang sakit. no So, ang sakit tuloy-tuloy pa rin. So, pwede pa rin tayo magkaroon ng sore throat or whatever, uh, diarrhea na hindi COVID. Paano mo ito matutuunan ng pansin kung hindi nyo pinapapunta yung mga pasyente sa clinic? Mag-zoom kayo. Ito, 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 ito. Ang ginagawa natin to Mag-zoom kayo with your clients. May limitasyon yan kasi syempre hindi mo napapakinggan yung baga, hindi mo na-examine yung pasyente, pero kakayanin natin yan. Um, there are ways that you will ask your patients to describe what they're feeling to you and show it. Oh, ito meron akong rush, ganyan. Pwede niyang gawin yun. Um, there's a lot of ways to do that. Kailangan lang mag effort tayo ng konti. No? May extra effort tayo kasi um, maaaring yung mga clinicians natin ay na-deploy sa uh, quarantine. Kailangan mag-isip tayo ng ways na, Doc, uh, pwede ka ba tumanggap ng Viber call sa pasyente natin na may karamdaman ngayon. Actually, actually, Kate, this there there, there is a question uh, on the uh, dun sa chat group um, from Makoy. Uh, up until given formal instruction from Phil Phil regarding if they will cover courier fees for the transportation of ARB within Manila, will it be shouldered by the client? Or do you know when a field help provide their final instruction? Um, McCoy, actually, even without the field health guidelines specific for the you know utilization of uh, OHAT reimbursement for this, puede kasi dun sa existing guidelines natin it says uh, all HIV related activities and this include actually even the cost of courier. It's just that. You know, um, iba iba yung interpretation ng iba't ibang facilities, and that's why we're pushing for field help na maglabas ng memo specific for this. But even without, you know, um, this guideline, you can still use the existing OHAT guidelines para majustify yung paggamit ng OHAT reimbursement for the courier service. Now, for global fund sites, we you know, good news, we already mobilized some resources from the savings of Global Fund na pwedeng um, gamitin yung Global Fund money to cover for courier services. You just have to coordinate with your, may tinatawag tayong assistant regional coordination or mga ARCs natin, um, you know, um, uh, coordinate or, or call, call them on, on how to access this money para dun sa uh, courier services. Now, maraming ways. Um, I agree with Kate, kung hindi naman life-threatening, huwag nyo na papuntahin. But, um, medyo mahirap lang ito, Kate, in some provinces. Kasi, 
wala din talagang uh, available na couriers, walang lalamu, walang Grab Express dun sa area nila. So, minsan talaga kailangan pumunta nung, nung client uh, dun sa primary care clinic, you know, o yung um, treatment uh, treatment facility na malapit sa kanila. So, um, case to case, si, ano siguro scenario kung depende doon sa availability of mechanism in place doon sa kanya-kanyang lugar. And is there evidence that the SARS-CoV can possibly be found in semen or vaginal fluid, Dr. Louis? So far, wala pang evidence uh, na nakita yung uh, uh, SARS-CoV sa vaginal fluid and semen. Uh, except for feces. So I, I mentioned kung reaming, so mayroong risk. If you do reaming, you know, pwedeng, pwedeng makuha sa feces. So they have found that COVID is shed through the stool. Um, ito nga lang yung, yung theory of shedding. We don't know if the shedded viral RNA is in fact infectious. Mm -hmm. So be safe na lang. So kung meron sa poop, baka meron din sa, sa semen and vaginal. I, I have, ano, pwede pa kung dumagdag, sorry. Yes. Yes. Yes, yung webinar na pinanood ko the other day, um, na-discuss yan. Ang tama yung sinabi ni Doc Louie, wala pa daw um, evidence, wala pa daw science na nag-prove na mayroon sa semen at saka sa vaginal fluid. But the experts are leaning towards doon sa sinasabi nila possible na mayroon. Kasi meron na nga daw sa feces na nakita and it's the same thing with HIV during the 80s na nung unang researches daw nila, wala daw silang alam pa about um, the existence of the virus doon sa, sa semen and vagina. So, mas ginagawa nila sa ngayon na um, itreat daw siya possibly na mayroon. Kaya yun nga yung sinasabi ko, wala daw munang sex. Sabi. Okay. So, next. Uh, paano if walang budget si Hub kasi hindi nakakapag-claim sa OHAT? So, hindi, so walang funds, kaya hindi applicable ang pag-shoulder ng courier or any expenses sa delivery system since wala pang reimbursement from PhilHealth. Well, kung, kung, kung wala pa talagang uh, nakiklaim from OHAT, I think, you know, lahat naman siguro ng LGU ay mayroong emergency fund. Um, I think, you know, yung mga city health officer or yung treatment health physician can lobby for some amount uh, to be utilized for this purpose. Kasi um, I'm sure since may emergency, ano na, nag-declare nag, nag na ng uh, uh, state of emergency, pwede na nilang mobilize uh, yung, yung budget even for this. Okay, ayan. So... LGUs para ma-maximize yung gulong. Yes. Next, so <coughs> if you have stocks of lopinavir ritonavir, which none of our current patients use, and our internists, IDS, ask for some to be used for PUIs or COVID positive, are we allowed to provide them from our treatment hub given its same institution? So, ang sagot ni Bench kahapon is, as of now, wala pang guidelines. Ang alam niya, wag daw muna, pero dahil importante siya, life and death siya, pag-uusapan mo. Kasi may ethical issues yan eh. Kuyari, yung COVID mo, yun lang yung chance niya para mabuhay. Ipagdadamot pa natin. So yan ha, importante yan. Mahirap mag magdamot kasi kung lalabas siya ng life-saving treatment. Ayun, sabi ni Bench, yung supply natin ng second line meds is okay for six months. Mm -hmm. So, meron pa tayong just in case plan B for this. In case yung India ay sarado pa rin. Right now, actually, tomorrow we will be having a virtual meeting with the Department of Health, with NASPCP to talk about you know, the contingency plan in just in case may extend pa rin yung ECQ. 
So I cannot answer you now, Kate, but uh, like Ben mentioned, we have enough supply until for six months. But the uh, concern nga namin is after six months, papano na yung uh, papano na yung stock natin, considering nasarado yung India and uh, you know other supplier. But we will know in the next. Uh, we will have a meeting on uh, Wednesday, actually, ng uh, afternoon. So I can give you a um, a feedback after that. Okay, thank you. Um, and dito actually si Ivy. Uh, it's Ivy here. Ivy is working with our Vianihan, and we just wanna get some feedback from that endeavor. So yung our Vianihan is. So, uh, volunteers na nag effort na mag-send ng mga ARVs sa mga pasyente natin all over. Ito ba si Ivy? Yes, can you hear me? Ayan, okay, good. Okay, uh, usually yung pinaka-challenge namin is yung iba, hindi namin nakokontakt yung hub, whether... So all channels, we try all channels, but the first strategy is to call. But sometimes, walang sumasagot or hindi na kontak. Yung personal experience ko ay biglang unavailable yung line or something. So pagun palang hahanap na kami ng, of course, the nearest hub, like what what you what Doc Louie also suggested. However, minsan kasi yung nearest hub naman ay hindi available si ARV mismo. Yan. Um, Louis, is there a way for us to have like a Facebook group of hubs outside the NCR for this? Or kahit like ano, cluster? Kasi yung sa NCR, ang dali eh. Alam mo yun? Mm -hmm. Mag Magtatag lang kami ng query. Uh, RITM. Ang RITM kasi, di ba, ano siya, COVID hospital siya. So marami talaga na hindi doon kumukuha. So, laging kinoconfirm sa RITM na pasyente mo ba to, pasyente mo ba to. So, can we do that for the others para hindi naman mahirapan itong mga efforts ng private sector on verifying? Yeah, actually, we, we had a discussion with Epidemiology Bureau and Global Fund, uh, uh, yung PR, yung, uh, ng, ng Global Fund. We're doing this uh, monitoring. Meron na kaming tool na gagamitin. Uh, they started actually calling the facilities. Um, the information that they can get using that monitoring tool, of course, yung real-time supply at the facility level. Because we understand since ngayon anyone can access you know, any treatment facilities, and yung allocation for, for that ay magbabari na, depende kung you know, sila ba yung facility na pupuntahan, mas maraming pupunta na, na, na client. So, we're now uh, doing that monitoring um, activities on a weekly basis. So, we will share that information siguro in the next few days. We just have to talk, you know, that's one of the agenda for, for tomorrow's meeting. Uh, kung paano lang yung uh, pag-cascade ng information because it's a it's a it's a it's a government uh, initiated uh, activity and uh, the partners are supporting the, the the epidemiology bureau but of course um we we will decide kung paano ikakaskade yung information para isa lang din yung yung magiging um, tawag dito um communication line actually there's another question kate on mm -hmm. the first one i think uh what specific advice can we give to PLHIV that is PUI and they are in isolation to avoid having depression? You know, just like with other PUIs, non-PLHIV, I mean, same, same um, you know, guidance, same advice that we provide. Um, of course, if they are isolated, I think they should continue be, um, you know, contacting, you know, their family, loved ones, and even their provider just in case you know the the, the symptoms progress progress you know to a more severe one kung kailangan na ba silang dalhin sa facility they have to have contact number of the healthcare providers na pwede nilang tawagan so and basically assure them that if they are um, immuno uh, you know 
they're taking their medications on a regular basis. They have an immune system at that point, ano sila, um, undetectable. I think um, they have this, the same um, tawag dito risk as to the general population. Uh, I, um, last na lang, Kate, of course, uh, you know, for the health facilities, kasi I think some of the um, ano natin, uh, participants natin are also manning their uh, treatment facilities, social hygiene clinics. Let's continue providing service kahit na limit yung number of hours, but you know, you keep your lines open kasi uh, yung mga telepono ninyo are already provided dun sa ating mga PLHIV and they may, may be contacting you anytime for, for their refill needs and for any other concerns. I suggest that if you can open actually a hotline that they can call, uh, you know, in for psychosocial support, lalo na kung ma-extend pa talaga ito, I'm sure a lot of people will suffer, you know, anxiety and, you know, address their, their psychosocial needs. So, kailangan natin mayroong um, hotline na pwede silang tawagan. Thank you. Hi, question. Um, kasi us usapan kasi yung sex. I know na ang NCR and kar karamihan sa Pilipinas ngayon is nasa lockdown. But there are um, clients, PLHIVs, and kahit na walang, PL, kahit walang HIV na nagkakaroon pa rin ng sexual encounters. And dito sa amin sa ship kasi, nagkakaroon kami ng mga pasyente or mga walk-ins na may mga sintomas ng ibang mga sexually transmitted infections kahit na naka-ECQ. Ngayon, dahil syempre, um, anytime naman, pa pwede kami ritong uh, makipag Zoom consultation with Doc Kate. I just want to know kung ano yung ibang ginagawa ng ibang mga clinics, ibang social hygiene clinics, or ano kaya yung mas magandang gawin nila in in cases na mga ganito, like walang laboratory testing to conduct um, testing for syphilis wala tayong pang swab, walang kung ano man. Can the doctors do empirical um, judgment na lang sa kung ano yung um, nakikita nila doon sa mga pasyente? Yun ba yung dapat gawin or what? Yeah, I, I, I think, you know, even prior to uh, COVID crisis, uh, Ed, um, yung mga social hygiene clinics naman natin, are um, knowledgeable in treating uh, sexually transmitted infections um, empirically. I mean, you know, even without diagnostics. So I think they just they just have to continue providing those kind of services. Ang mas concern lang kami actually yung um, operating hours ng mga clinic natin. So and and I'm and at the same time, it's not easy for the public sector na mag-set up nung, you know, nung, nung virtual platform unlike nung mga private clinics. But we encourage them actually na, na for the meantime, pwede namang through kahit na phone consultation. And based on the symptoms actually, they can provide, um, you know, the necessary uh, management um, kahit na hindi nila makita yung client. So, um, of course, this is medyo hindi lang natin din ma-implement in all facilities. May mga matatapang na clinicians. But of course, um, this would need guidance actually from the national program na um, i-allow yung mga clinicians natin to you know, do phone consultations and provide antibiotics. For me, ako nag, I just had one client yesterday um, through Viber lang, I, I prescribe, you know, antibiotics and pinicturean ko lang yung, yung, uh, yung uh, tawag dito prescription. So, I think kung hindi kaya sa mga LGUs, for example, um, kung madami na si Doc Kate, you can actually refer the client to me and I'm willing to, to manage them. 
So thank you very much. Thank you everyone. So ayon, we'll see everyone on Thursday.